I'm Hannah from Hoodles and today I'm sharing the process of my skogsrå. But she typically has a hole in her back like a tree and she sometimes had a tail. Skogsrå however didn't have any horns. I decided to go with horns anyway to be more ox-like. The doll I'll be using is an Audrey from Descendants. I've never used a Descendants doll before, but her joints had such a good moving range and the body type will fit perfectly with my Skooksroa. Here is a comparison between a Monster High and the Descendants. This will be interesting. I rubbed the paint off with acetone. I couldn't remove the doll's head, by the way, so this had to be done with the head still attached to the body. If the body gets acetone on it, it will, in the worst case, melt a bit and leave marks, so I'll have to be careful. I was looking forward to painting a face with teeth since I had never done that before. There are two Claudia Wolf in my stock box right now, bought them especially for the toothy reason. Here I started on the horns. I used a piece of metal wire from an old notebook to use as a base and then I used control cost to sculpt. I gave the horns some textures with the help of my X-Acto knife, then after 24 hours of curing I went in and sanded, sanded them down a bit. As a base color I mix acrylic paint with some beige pastels. Painting the first coat is so soothing somehow and uh, this is my favorite brush at the moment. It holds the paint so nicely and is so soft to work with. After the base layer is finished, it's time for the details. I start with some dark pastels close to the head, give it a little bit of an ombre effect, darken it with some acrylic paint and fill in some lines with a thin brush. There we go, her horns are finished. Time to make the hole in her back. First I sketch where I want it to be and so forth, and then I massacre away with my Dremel. The cutting disc is a bit too big for this, but I could do the main part and then go back with pliers and my X-Acto knife. Then I mixed some epoxy clay since I wanted to stick to the body and I needed the extra working time to give it a bark texture, as usual, one to one by weight. First I covered the inside since I planned on making a little fantasy landscape in there and then I proceeded with the edge. This orange color may seem way too light, but it always dries darker, plus it's easier to darken down a too light color than it is to lighten up a dark color in my highly unprofessional opinion. Here I'm filling in with darker color and rub excess off with a towel. I tried using army painter wash, let it all dry and dabbed on gold paint. Before moving on to some body paint, I drill a hole for the tail and some electrical wires. To make the back piece more coherent with the rest of the body, I decided to give her some tattoos. First I started with a base of dark brown, on top of that I painted with gold. The dark brown will make it 
pop more. I decided on some vines and leaves as a design. I used this on my math stall, which I made about a year ago. She was sold pretty quickly and now I'm a bit sad that I, as a principal, never make the same doll twice. She was one of my favorites and I spent a lot of time researching what I wanted on her. Here is the result, it's so shiny. Time for the face up, finally! I start with the outlines and then fill in the irises with a light blue. Her head was so easy to draw on, it was like drawing on paper. I made her before Del Fox, so the way I drew her face is not how I do it now. It's interesting to now look at this and go, oh yeah, I don't do that now. Honestly, I think Del Fox was a turning point for me. Oh well, this face up didn't turn out bad though. The Skogsro is the Swedish close relative to the Norwegian Huldra, a female folklore forest creature who protects the wild animals. Of course, she also lures men into intimate activities, after which they become quiet and introverted because a piece of their soul stays with her. It's quite beautiful. She can also give the hunters luck. Generally, she is one of the good guys, just uh, don't sleep with her. Most of us don't believe in her today, but she's fascinating to read about. The problem is that the Swedish information is rather insufficient, actually. There are a tiny description and some info about geographical variations of her, but it's scarce and uh, not very satisfying. So I turned to the Norwegian Wikipedia page to read about Huldra to get a better picture of who she is. For me, as a Swede, reading Norwegian is like, you, you know, looking at a painting where you have to step back and squint a bit, if you know what I mean, like, relax your brain. It's quite pleasant, actually. As you can see here, I tried out with a white pupil, didn't like it in the end, so I went back to black. Now that I look at it though, it kinda looks cool. I wanted to give her some extra blush, so I went in rather heavy with red pastels here and then I added some freckles by mixing red and brown pastels with a drop of water. eyebrows were too thin and I wanted her to look kinder if that makes sense so I added some pastels and hairs above them you can probably see the difference here I'm using blue pastels for some parts under the eyes beside the nose and a little bit on her temples And the face up is done! She looks a bit anime, but that's okay. It will fit my concept. Now for the dress. The dress is made in two parts, the skirt and the bodies. The skirt will be made of a half circle and the bodies will be a triangle so that the fabric folds itself neatly in the front. It's supposed to look draped or something. Here I'm taking a bunch of measurements so that I can create a pattern. The pieces are supposed to look something like this, did some math, calculated some stuff and ended up with these pieces though. 
roughly. After transferring it with the correct measurements, it looked a lot different. I decided to use this stretchy, shiny, off-white fabric and first tried out how it would drape. Finding materials for doll clothes can be a hassle, since the thickness also needs to be scaled. Fabric for regular clothes are often too thick for doll clothes, it doesn't fold right and it looks odd. I took the liberty to add some ribbon to the top and had no real plan, but it felt like a good idea. Then I sewed the front seam and the hem of the skirt before hand sewing the pieces together. Sewing the fabric made it a bit crinkled at the seams, but I like the effect. Paper clips. They are so helpful while sewing doll clothes. Here I use them to keep the fabric together with the glue dries. And then I sew by hand, backhand stitches. I like this part, but it always makes me anxious. If one does something wrong while painting, you can more than often fix it somehow. If you sew wrong though, you have to dissect the parts and do it all over again. One time I sewed a doll skirt into my pyjama pants too. Because I do things like that, so I use a lot of fabric glue, ain't gonna lie. The dress is assembled! Now it needs some pretty details before I can call it quits. Since I was a kid I haven't embroidered, but I felt like it would go well with the Swedish folklore theme, so I gathered many different threads and coats and went nuts. And this is the result. The technique is questionable, but the effect is rather neat. I added some hanging ornaments with beads before I was satisfied. I was thinking of tying the dress in the back, but decided against it. Instead, I used two gold-plated rings and a necklace clasp. Finding ways to make the clothes changeable is problem-solving at its finest. These necklace clasps are technically oversized, if one wants to stick to the correct scale of things, but it will make do for now. She needs a tail. I took a couple of days wondering how to make the tail because I wanted it bendable, but not like plushy. I tried out this method to use a wire and hot glue as a base and it worked really well. This fabric was so soft and perfect for this purpose. The wire is again from an old notepad. Sometimes it's hard to know where the line goes between stingy and environmental. With the base finished, it's time for the fur. As you can see, the hairs go one way, so I noticed that and still sewed it on backwards. In the Swedish, we have a saying that goes gör om gör rätt, which basically translates into redo make right, and so I did. All is well that ends well. I added some hair to the tail's end, which I used for the head. And here we have it. It kind of looks like a lion's tail, but meh, that's okay. For hair, I used alpaca fibers from the Suri alpaca, it's so soft and silky, and the color reminds me of chocolate. As usual, I glued the wefts right onto the scalp. I should have painted the scalp a similar color, always forget that, but it covered enough for nothing to shine through, so that was a yay. I used an iron on low heat and some water to smooth the parting down. Then, after some brushing and some uh, not-so-tender love and care, she is finished. Let's go back to the back. As I've said, I wanted to create a little miniature ecosystem inside the hole in her back, so I made a special order for glow-in-the-dark UV resin. I mean, how cool would it be with glow-in-the-dark mushrooms? I made the stalks from a fishing line and two layers of UV resin, then I cut it and attached it to the caps. I 
used grass meant for miniature building and some tiny stones, then I just glued it all inside. I tried out the mushrooms and they didn't glow that much in the darkness, barely at all. I added some glow in the dark powder by dry brushing some glue and then added it with a brush. And this is how it looks in the dark. I wanted to add some lights however, so time for some soldering. This is what I used, an LED. Uh, stand with clamps. Then I bought this neat battery holder with switching cables. It holds two CR2032 batteries, which sums up to 6 volts. Here are the batteries and a piece of a small shrinking cord. If I don't get all the words correctly, I apologize, but I am doing my best using all this technical language. We need a resistor for this, since the voltage will be 6 and the blue LED needs 3. We want to lessen the voltage with 3 volts, since 6 minus 3 is 3, and Ohm's law says that resistance is futile. Nah, no, just kidding. We need to divide these 3 volts with the maximum current it can take, 20 milliamperes, and we end up with 150 ohms. Neat. Then, over to stripping the wire, which takes its practice. The minus side goes to the shorter leg of the lead, which is called the cathode. After threading on the shrinking cord, I hook out the wire and the anode leg to make it a bit more secure before I solder it together. It was convenient to have this stand to hold it together while soldering, so helpful. Then I push the cord up and shrink it by holding the solder underneath it. I tried first with my hairdryer, but it blew pastels away. Literally. It was a mess. Then I add the resistor in the same way on the positive side, the anode. Let's see if it works. And it does! Squee! I wanna put lead in everything right now! Before I assemble it, I use an electrical tape piece to wrap around the wire near the lead. Then I glue the lamp onto her stomach. I like that it shines through a bit. Then, last but not least, her tail gets glued on. So I had so much fun making her, I love trying new things, maybe I love it a bit too much. I realized I'll never be like super good at anything because I always chase the next thing to try. But that is also why this hobby is perfect, because there are so many different things to try. Sewing, sculpting, painting, casting, messing with electricity, it's challenging. And can be made as small or as big of a project as one feels like. So anyway, as usual, it's fun to compare, so here is before. And here is after. And here she is. I'm a little bit proud of her actually. As you can see, I embroidered the Chinese kanji for cow uh, on the belt. And that was because she was originally a part of a collaboration, but uh, I decided on another doll for that one because she turned out too little scary, you know? She looks too friendly for my taste. But uh, I like the lights, I like the glow in the dark stuff, and uh, she just looks really sweet. So thank you so much for watching. May the health be with you. Bye!